Across vast stretches of Western and Central Australia lies the formidable expanse known as the Great Australian Desert. It's the fourth largest desert on the planet, coming in after the icy reaches of the Antarctic, the Arctic's rugged terrain, and the legendary Sahara. Within this vast desert, ten primary deserts interlace, each claiming a portion of the continent's surface. The Great Victoria Desert is the biggest, sprawling over roughly 422,466 square kilometers, closely followed by the imposing Great Sandy Desert. In this dry land where rain is scarce, the Great Australian Desert gets just about 9.84 inches of rainfall each year. To give you an idea, the Sahara, known for its desolation, gets a mere 3 inches of rain annually. Shielded from the typical wet and dry seasons of the north, the interior of Australia stays relatively stable, with occasional thunderstorms during the wet season, from April to September. Despite its small population, Australia is notorious globally for deforestation. Over the past two centuries, nearly half of the continent's forests have been cleared for development, leaving behind a scarred landscape. In the early 1800s, British colonization of Australia set in motion a chain of events that would forever alter the continent's landscape. With Britain already depleted of its forests due to centuries of intensive agriculture and war, Australian timber became a valuable resource for expansion. As British timber companies gained access to Australia's virgin forests, vast swaths of land were cleared for agriculture and infrastructure development. Despite growing concerns about deforestation by the 1880s, little was done to halt the destruction. Today, Australia faces the consequences of its environmental past. It holds the dubious distinction of being the world's worst offender in mammal extinctions, with over 500 wildlife species and 37 plant species lost forever. While agricultural expansion has driven economic growth, with exports like meat and livestock seeing significant increases, the sector's contribution to the overall economy remains modest, accounting for only 1.9% of the value-added GDP and 2.5% of total employment as of 2020-2021. Moreover, the unchecked exploitation of natural resources has precipitated widespread land degradation, leading to man-made desertification, a stark reminder of the perils of unsustainable development. However, some regions in Australia are starting to turn this around, transforming large areas of degraded land back into biodiverse ecosystems by restoring millions of trees, and, in turn, improving the lives of rural farming communities. That led to what we're seeing now. It's been, uh, been really great. As well as capturing over a million tons of carbon to benefit the planet as a whole. Australia's government is on a mission to re-green its arid regions, driven by the need to fight climate change and boost economic growth. Native plants are key players in this effort perfectly adapted to thrive in harsh desert conditions with deep root systems and water-storing abilities. By planting these native species, Australia aims to restore natural ecosystems, benefiting from improved soil health, increased biodiversity, and reduced erosion. This greening initiative not only enhances environmental conditions, but also opens up opportunities for profitable and sustainable industries to flourish. One shining example of this is the Yarra Yarra Biodiversity Corridor Restoration Project in Western Australia, where over 2.5 million seeds of native flora have been planted, transforming barren landscapes into thriving habitats. The impact of this project is remarkable. Over 30 species of birds have returned to the area, and several mammal species have been reintroduced, marking a significant milestone in the restoration of biodiversity in the region. But Australia's re-greening efforts are about more than just ecological restoration. They're part of a broader strategy to combat climate change. By planting trees and vegetation, they're not only creating habitats for wildlife, but also absorbing atmospheric carbon dioxide, reducing greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to global warming. Biodiversity corridors, like the Yarra Yarra Biodiversity Corridor, play a crucial role in connecting fragmented habitats and allowing animals to move freely between them. 
These corridors provide shelter, food, and protection from predators, mimicking the structure and diversity of native vegetation. The Yara Yara project goes beyond environmental benefits. It's also creating opportunities for local communities. By employing indigenous people and working with traditional landowners, the project is not only providing jobs, but also fostering a deeper connection to the land. With 80 local businesses involved and a total cost of 4 million Australian dollars, the Yara Yara Biodiversity Corridor is a testament to the power of collaboration and commitment to environmental stewardship. Situated in Western Australia's wheat belt, an area once cleared for agriculture, the project is reclaiming degraded land and preventing further erosion and degradation of the soil. As Australia continues its journey toward a greener future, Projects like the Yara Yara Biodiversity Corridor serve as beacons of hope, demonstrating what can be achieved when communities come together to restore and protect the natural world. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and be up to date whenever we post a brand new video. We'll see you next time.